to the clerk's report. If uh, anyone wants to make a motion to jump right to, it would be old business, right? 3A. Yeah, so moved. 3A. I, I second that. All right. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Unanimous. We don't need to take a roll. Well, so uh, we will move on to 3A. And um, for anyone who's watching this live or later on as a uh, video, we have invited um, Laura and her, um, it was Alex. Alex was Thank here you. before, right? Yeah. Uh, we have asked Valley CDC to join us. Um, and they were here once before. We asked them to come back and go into a little more depth into um, questions, frequently asked questions and things that we should really understand about specifically the local preference aspect of um, the issue that's coming up with um, the town uh, buying into the plan to redevelop the tunnel lodge uh, into affordable housing. Um, so with no Further ado, you can correct me on that intro or go ahead, Laura. Sure. Um, well, I'm here again, as you're saying, as a follow-up, I can certainly try to address some of the questions that you sent. And I also just have some general things to communicate to the committee. So the main reason we wanted to connect with this committee, and we've done so with a number of different boards in Hadley, as we look at proposing affordable housing at the Econo Lodge, but really wanted to kind of try to draw a line with you folks and hopefully in town between affordable housing as a, as a general principle and issues of diversity and equity, because we think there's a straight line. Um, but you may or may not think that, people in town may or may not think that. And so we presented some data um, at the last meeting um, to kind of support the idea that there's a strong connection between housing that we live in Hampshire County in Massachusetts and our country in a very housing segregated condition. Mm -hmm. um, and that there are things we can do, especially through affordable housing to desegregate somewhat mm -hmm. the, the condition that exists now, um, which was very intentionally constructed to be segregated. Systemically through Systemically. the federal government. Not the just by mistake. <laughs> government funding yes. and then the banks and right. right. Redlining, all kinds of yeah. laws that prohibited people of color from buying in certain communities, uh, getting insurance, continuing to this day, having lower appraised values for properties. There are all kinds of factors that helped uh, create that segregation. One of our residents here in town, when we were talking about this, not on um, in this committee, he came here from New York City and he went, after he heard about that, he went and, and looked and his parents, their uh, deed on their property in New York City had this little rider about, you know, no people of color. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> not an accident. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as we go into something that, you know, we're, we're thinking the town is generally either supportive or tolerant of the idea of converting the Econo Lodge for affordable housing. Um, we're hoping to have this committee be playing a supportive kind of advocacy role as we go through our zoning process, or if we were to make a request for local funds or something like that, that hopefully this committee would say, aha, you know, here's part of our mission is to, to kind of foster this kind of equity and diversity in Hadley. And, Here's a tangible way that this might be able to happen. That's our that's our that's our wish. Um, and then we wanted to talk also with you about local preference, which isn't specific to this particular project. It's a more global um, discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can talk a bit more about that. Since some of your questions were specific to that, mm -hmm. um, I I have a, a I just would like to say as a cautionary word. It's very important to us to have bring everybody along uh, on the different boards and committees and have it. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to create a situation where one committee is wanting one thing, another committee is mm -hmm. arguing with them about it, because in the end, it may defeat our ultimate goal, which is creating affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, so just wanted to 
kind of say that we're not we're not wanting to stir the pot in a negative way mm -hmm. um but we are looking for you to understand mm -hmm. what we're doing you get information directly from us as and i'm going to again a number of different ports in town for the same reason um so it has come up uh, already in hadley that the town may look for local preference um as one of its qualifying criteria for the Connell Lodge property. So uh, Mark, you had asked, you know, how and when does the local reference percentage get set? Yeah. So it's something that's specific, first of all, to a certain zoning called chapter 40B, which is specific to affordable housing. It's a zoning, it's a statewide zoning provision that allows someone developing affordable housing to request waivers from local zoning bylaws. Um, in the case of the Econa Lodge, we really, I believe, only need one major waiver, which is that the building is in the industrial zone. We want to create a residential use um, in the industrial zone. But it's a pre-existing site and property that we're not changing significantly or layout or anything like that. Um, and so during the course of that zoning hearing, it's a pretty negotiated process between the developer and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, that is a point in time at which sometimes a town through its zoning board of appeals will say, and by the way, as a condition of your permit, we would like local preference at certain percentage or to be, they might say the greatest extent permitted by regulation, which is 70%. Mm -hmm. um, so it gets discussed. It sometimes gets codified within that zoning approval decision. And then later on, if the town um, agrees, which they typically do, the select board, they would write a letter to the, the state subsidizing agency and essentially defend that request. And they would defend it by saying, they would give data about local need to say, you know, here's why we think we have local need in this area. Here's our data, here's our census data, here's our statistics to support the fact that we think we should set aside so many percent of units for, for local residents. Local residents being defined as people who live in town, people who work in town, people who work for the government of the town mm -hmm. uh, and people who have children in the um, local school system. We're not allowed to do so a different or. definition. It's or. It's it's or. Um, and it's a prescribed definition. We can't change it. We can't be like people who grew up in town or people's mother-in-law mm -hmm. lives in town. We can't mm -hmm. do any of that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a little bit of a narrow definition um, in terms of even who you might think of as being you know, local. Um, so uh, you asked about the immediate and long-term impacts of setting a high local preference percentage. Um, I We had shared a, a study uh, that is really the best source of data that I know of so far. There hasn't, to my knowledge, been a lot of data collected on this. Um, but this is a 2021 study done in June of 2021 that looked at, I think, three different developments within a community that set a high local preference percentage. And what they found was, um, local white applicants ended up being disproportionately favored when they looked at who got units. So they looked at who applied for units and the racial composition, whether they were local or not local. And then they looked at who actually succeeded in getting a, a unit. Because often you have a large pool of applicants, like this data is looking at 1,157 applicants and 61 apartments. Mm -hmm. So we won't have numbers that are quite that extreme because we're not in a metro area, but we will. We might have yeah. you know, four or five times the number of applicants yeah. as we have apartments. Mm -hmm. um, the state mm -hmm. will only allow local preference for rental housing in the initial visa. So it's part of that first lottery, but then as units turn over in the future, yeah. it's, it's open equally to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about the initial rent up is some people may live in the housing for a long time. We may turn over mm -hmm. one sure. unit a year, sure. basically because people don't have a lot of places to move to that are affordable. So the wait lists for affordable housing are very long. So it's a huge advantage for an applicant. I always encourage you to get into the lottery because <laughs> your odds are so much better. You can wait for years um, otherwise to find an affordable unit. So it doesn't, the impact of it is gonna diminish over time but it's gonna be very meaningful in the kind of the composition of that first about five to 10 years, I would say, of, of who lives, who gets this affordable housing. Can I ask a question? Yes. On that? So I, it, 
And correct me if I'm wrong. I think I heard you say that in the initial rent up, yep. that's where that local preference applies. So yep. let's let's say we our voices were not heard, and let's say Hadley voted for seventy yep. percent. So seventy percent of the initial does that does that also impact the waiting list? Okay, so once, yeah, but as you said, it, it's not a quick turnover. It's not general. Turnover. Okay, so typically the lottery and the lottery may have other preference categories. So and it's it's complicated, right? So income eligibility can is a requirement can trump local preference. Um, sometimes when we have the homeless units that are set aside, that might, you know, it's just this layering of preferences, one of which could be local preference. But I, as I have you draw a, literally from a, 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 uh, I, I also have a question about this um, <clears throat> 70%. Do I understand that initially 70% of the people who are accepted for this need to be from the town? But after that initial acceptance, that requirement goes away. You have part of it right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have right is that the, the condition changes following the initial lottery. So it's not that 70% of the people who are applicants have to be local. It's that you can set up a preference for 70% of the apartments to go to local applicants. So, and in, in some cases, I've seen communities have a 70% local preference, but they don't have enough local applicants to fill those, those units. Mm -hmm. And so then those units go to other people who've applied. They're not going to hold units empty waiting for, for local people to apply. Mm -hmm. So it can play out in a number of different ways. Um, the reason we thought it might be of interest to this committee is because we're starting to see data evolving and it's not surprising that when you're in a majority white community and you have a local preference you're you're kind of going counter to the the goal of increasing diversity racial diversity in the community um but exactly how it plays out in each situation may be a bit different did i also understand that someone who has a child in the hadley public schools whether that family lives here or not qualifies right. at, for the local preference. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. we don't get to, we, we have as Valley or as a developer, we haven't, we don't have the prerogative nor does the town of defining local preference. It's defined for us by the state. Um, okay. It's because they get the lion's share of subsidy really for any kind of affordable housing development. So, so someone, so someone who's exercising school choice yep. who live in Springfield, but their child goes to the Hadley Public Schools is eligible for, to be considered in that 70%. Correct. Yep. Thank you. But someone who uh, lived in town all their life, but moved away a year ago is not mm. local. <clears throat> so, you know, if there's no perfect system for anything really <laughs> so that's the system that we you know those are the rules that we're asked that we're all asked to play by um did you have a question yeah i you know i like what like, what what you said or, and you said about if somebody has i should take this down so you can hear me better if somebody has kids in the school like through school choice mm -hmm. um whether they come from springfield or holyoke yep. or or you know, someplace that is a lot more diverse than Hadley. Right. This gives them the opportunity to live in town. Mm -hmm. Yep. If we. Yep. And if you're employed, so yeah. Um, so if you're a low wage earner at the mall, and you have to live exactly. way off someplace. Exactly. This gives you so in in that way, it's attractive. Yep. But in the fact that it tends to reinforce right. segregation, it's right. not attractive. Right. I mean, we do a lot of affirmative marketing um, and yes, still 
folks who are living in a town may be the ones who learn about these opportunities more than mm -hmm. people who are living in other communities, even if they work in town. And we, again, we do a lot of marketing to try to overcome that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it's to make to get the sure word that, out to everybody. Yeah. So might want to live in Hadley. <laughs> to make sure that the families who are school choice yeah. to Hadley know oh, about yeah. it and that the people who work at the mall and so on know it's, about it. It's a, it's a challenging thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and there are some communities where, and I don't think this is true for Hadley, but where you know, you have a, a more, you have a majority minority population, you have a low income community, and you're getting a lot of gentrification pressure. Mm -hmm. In a case like that, local preference helps the people who are mm -hmm. low income mm -hmm. and not white stay in that community where prices are increasing. So it's not a one size fits all. It's mm -hmm. only just Let's be thoughtful about it. A right. lot of communities kind of seem to do a knee jerk. Well, our people are the best. You know, we should do our people first. <laughs> and I, all I'm saying is encouraging some thought, thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, is it okay. good, a good fit for Hadley? Is it 70%? Is it 50%? Like, mm -hmm. What seems to make sense in this yeah. situation? Yeah. And that would just, be my other question is. Mm -hmm. You know, do you only ask for 70% or That's can you maximum. ask for smaller? So you can't ask for more than 70%. Right. So there have been a, a couple of communities that have gone down to 30% really as they look at the unintended consequence, right. honestly, right. which is perpetuating housing racial segregation right. that has come out of a local preference policy. There are some communities where the, the housing authority has a local preference. This is not housing authority, but you can see that yeah. it, it, it Again, it's not, it wasn't, I'm hoping it wasn't intentional, but there is this yeah. numeric outcome mm -hmm. um, that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Has Hadley um, made a decision about this? Well, the only thing that I know about Hadley so far is that um, the Board of Selectmen uh, provided a letter of support for Valley when we went to the state to ask for a piece of paper we need to get the zoning that we need. And in that letter, they stated that they wanted to have 70% local preference. Oh, they, oh okay. The select board said that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was the product of a lot of discussion. Right. I think it was, again, this is what I'm saying. A lot of right, communities right. just, it just, it, you hear local preference. It sounds like a good mm -hmm. thing. It sounds like by local. You're protecting yeah. your local residents. But, and it's, so, but it's sustaining the status quo. Potentially. Mm -hmm. So it, again, it, I don't, I don't, I really don't want to pit right, right. this yeah. committee against yeah. another no, board in town no, no. because it will we will shoot ourselves in the foot, honestly. No. Um, no. If the but if we can is, yeah, educate them more about it and maybe suggest a lower percentage as a compromise. You know, mm -hmm. so that we're not coming to the select board and saying, no, don't do local preference. And they're saying, well, we want local preference. Right. So, right. and you're just advisory. So you know, go shut up. Honestly, it's an, it's an, I think it's an we opportunity for some of these things. Community education yeah. and discussion. And maybe mm -hmm. we could do 50% or 30%. So just talk to exactly the logistics. If it's a lottery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let's say it's 50% yep. local preference. Yeah. Uh, so do they pick the names and then see if they fit? Oh, you don't fit. Got enough. We've got our 50% toss. Like, it's how so does it actually work? Yeah. <laughs> well, <I'm scary. laughs> so uh, essentially, people apply, they uh, undergo an initial screening, which looks primarily at their household size and income level, mm -hmm. just to kind of, yeah, it's like a fit test. Sure. Everybody who seems to be eligible goes into a bingo ball. Right. Someone's pulling out numbers, but it gets a number. And literally, they go numerically down a list. Then you might have a breakout, a column that says, okay, of, in this order, here are the people who qualify for local preference. And they might be like, yeah. But they will then have a sub column. And then folks who need a wheelchair accessible unit will have a sub column and they'll get priority for mm -hmm. those units. Mm -hmm. And then folks that are within a certain very, very low income tier yeah. will have another column. Mm -hmm. And if there's a homeless preference, those folks might have a column. So you essentially end up in a numeric, a, a random lottery drawn 
list, but within a subcategory that you're qualified for. Okay. It's really I see. So there's still a lot of lottery in here. There is. And there there are That's other forces at work. For example, um having a wheelchair accessible unit, having a match there is going to mm -hmm. trump local preference. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to put a local person who doesn't need a wheelchair accessible unit right, right. Uh, into that unit over someone who yeah. needs it. So again, there's certain I know it's it's actually a very complex little puzzle um, to yeah. try to be fair yeah. to everybody. It just brings up the bigger picture, which is there's not enough yeah. affordable right. housing. Right. Period. Right. Yeah. This is a right. step, but right. you can see that. It's... Well, you you basically people who have very high needs competing against other groups of people who have very high needs. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> right. It's yeah. kind of sad. It's, it's kind of sad. Are there any um, local communities? I don't know how public this information would be, but other local communities that have voted for less yeah. local preference? Yeah. I can send you um, an example. I think I know of at least one that went down to 30%. Okay. Um, the study that we cited in here, I think they were talking about either 30% or just not having local preference. That's what I was going to ask you. Is there a minimum? No, you could say zero. No. Well, Northampton never requests local preference. That's their policy. They just never, it never even comes up. They don't believe in it. Um, the other, you know, thing for communities to think about is, is your housing part of a regional system of housing? Or is it just have these housing? And you know, I would always argue you're in a in a, in a region, um, but not everybody feels that way. So as we look at you know solving issues, housing segregation, inequalities, you know homelessness, are we doing it town by town, or is it part of a region the way that jobs are or education yeah, can right, be? Yeah, right. You know, and so if you begin to think of it as a regional resource then local preference starts to make not that much sense. Mm -hmm. um, because what you'll see is your Hadley residents who might want to move into affordable housing in East Hampton or wherever, Greenfield or Amherst, would you want them to be second to other people? Who, you know, it's like, don't mm -hmm. you want them to have maximum opportunity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it, it really kind mm -hmm. of you scratch the surface and you're like, whoa, <laughs> these mm -hmm. things of like, mm -hmm. you know, how right kind of, how do we define our earth, our territory, our yeah. community? Yeah. Versus, you know, yeah. it just it really does start to, you know, all these things start to surface. But I think often there's not a lot of thought that goes into the decision from, you know, from a select board perspective or zoning board perspective. It just seems like, especially if a town's putting some local CPA money in or something, they're like, well, our people, you know. We want our people to live there. We our people have needs, which is true. I mean, yeah. there are people in yeah. every yeah. housing everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. There's people who who need yeah. affordable housing. So yeah, when is Hadley putting CPA money in? Uh, we've not made a request for CPA. Not to say that we wouldn't um, at some point down the road. Um, it's it's not something we've asked for at this point. Um, really, our our kind of where we're at now is wanting to make sure that we can get zoning permission. Um, because that's essential for the project. Um, and we anticipate applying for that zoning permit soon, like within mm -hmm. the next month. Mm -hmm. And so that would trigger then public hearings. Mm -hmm. And again, hoping we have people who are knowledgeable about the project, supportive of the project, who can send an email or turn up at a public hearing and say, mm -hmm. I support this, I think it's a good thing. You know, I'm for affordable housing. Or I think we should have more opportunities for doing, you know, whatever it is that yeah. speaks to someone's, yeah. whatever they think. But, you know, we're always looking to to have that group of people who are going to speak out in support of something. Mm -hmm. And this committee, again, seemed like kind of a natural, like, yeah, there's yeah. an extra point. Mm -hmm. Do you know the first uh, the local preference percent in Amherst? They, um, the project that we're building now, we have a building going up on um, Route 9, uh, right mm -hmm. next to the field house, Amherst College field house. Um, and they requested 70% local preference. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I think this was about a year, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if they would have a different conversation today. Yeah. Because that's, of that's all the, the reparations. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I thought, what? <laughs> yeah. You know, 
a time for everything, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah. it's interesting I, that Northampton would go zero and and we should go max. That's, you guys can be right in the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. going back to who makes who makes this decision? Is it our select board? No, the ZBM Board of Appeals. The board. Uh -huh. It gets negotiated when they okay. plot and they request variance. So what Which happened board? actually in that? Which board makes the decision? I'm sorry, I didn't. The zoning Board of Appeals. It's the permitting board, which in our case is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Um. They could be influenced, though, by a letter from the select board or a letter from this yeah. committee or right. police mm -hmm. chief or, I mean, their job actually in a comp permit is to be the funnel, you know, that to kind of pull all the other different right. stakeholders yeah. into right. town to make a decision. So mm -hmm. in the case that I was just mentioning with Amherst, um, the select board actually sent a letter to the zoning board saying we strongly support this 70% local preference. Mm -hmm. But then it was really up to the zoning board to decide how to, what to do with that, just like they would with any other input from another board. Mm -hmm. Now Amherst, as I, last time I looked at statistics, has not high, but higher percentage of diversity than Hadley. Mm -hmm. yes. So in my mind, I'm thinking local preference could mean keeping the yeah. right. It's yeah, it's such I mean, a different again, town. It's a nuanced conversation. Yeah. Um, you know what popped my eyes open really was the data from this recent study that showed this pretty dramatic um, outcome, where again the, the white local um, residents just end up having a disproportionate success in the lottery. Like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, this is, there's a lot to this. Yeah. 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 Really. Yeah. So, you know, it's probably statistical. Right? I, I bet it, I bet it makes sense. sense. Yep. Right. If you take the end mm -hmm. of the town and then you take then you take the units. I mean, I cannot do the statistical mm -hmm. analysis, but I'm sure there is. It yeah. probably lands that way everywhere. You know, it's more impactful in a community where you have a lot of local residents applying. Right. I mean, Hadley's a pretty mm -hmm. small universe. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, even if we had 70% local preference, we might not have that many applicants from Hadley. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Yeah. Um, but there's some communities where you know you're going to get so many more applicants than you have oh, slots. Sure. <laughs> I see Wayne has his hand up. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this may be out of order, but do you have a timeline for this process? Yes, um, we do. So we uh, submitted this document that we're required to submit to the state back in oh, September. It's called the Project Eligibility Letter Request. We expect the state to give us that letter um, probably in another week or two. As soon as we have it, we're all, we can put together a package that would go to the zoning board. And then they, a clock starts ticking. They have a certain number of days to post a hearing and a certain number of days to make a decision. Um, this kind of hearing process can go quickly um, or it can take a number of months to have continuations of public hearing, depending on how much interest and input there might be from, you know, either different boards or different neighbors or whatever. My family. I, yeah. <laughs> I always look for family resemblance. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you've been to the Hadley ZBA before. I have not. They do not have regularly scheduled meetings. That's often true. So they will only schedule them as yes. meetings allow. And yes. and so if there's enough, I think I I might be speaking out of turn, but I think that they generally do them quarterly. Yes. So if they continued it, that I don't know. I can't imagine they would want to continue because it drags someone. They can continue that to any time. So right. their requirement, it's, this is all kind of regulated right. and legislated. So from the time that the town clerk receives the permit application, right. I believe they have 40 days to open a hearing right. and then they have right, 80 days to close it. Okay. So, but they can never close it without continuing it. And they can continue to any time, just like any board can do a continuance mm -hmm. to a date certain as long as they announce it at that meeting. Um, so I've had boards meet with us weekly, 
some boards every month. I mean, it's it's all over the map in terms of experience capacity. Um, I'm aware that that Happy ZBA will be kind of newcomers to this yeah. process. Mm -hmm. huh. They might also benefit from some conversation or education. Yeah, it can't really come from us since we're the applicants, but right. yeah, right. They'll, they'll, right. yeah, they'll have to seek out resources. It could be town council, it could be, you know, <clears throat> town council. Um, mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Is so this is this something that our committee might speak to the zoning board about? If we came to a conclusion on our own as a committee, I think so. You could do so as a as a committee if you had you know consensus here or majority, however you make decisions, or certainly individuals of the group could speak as individuals as well and just identify as a resident. It, it can go either way. Or we could send letters since, yep. since they don't meet regularly. Yep. Yeah. But well, I will I will let you know when there are public hearings. Um, mm -hmm. But it could be that the committee wants to draft a letter at some point and just send it in, and I'll just have it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there. We would, we would have to consider whether a recommendation coming from the committee would have more or less weight than us as individuals going to the committee. That would be a decision we would mm -hmm. have to consider. We mm -hmm. can do both. Yeah. I, I think having a, a recommendation of the committee is is I don't, I don't want to say more meaningful but more official um, than individuals. Yeah. But sometimes people differ <laughs> on a committee, and so they can always just. I could see both. I could both. I could yeah. see an official mm -hmm. letter signed mm -hmm. by myself and all of us, mm -hmm. and then we could each individually express our own yeah. passions because yeah. we might come to the same agreement, but from different angles. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. people may have different priorities that they want to speak to. I mean, I've been yeah. to the Housing and Economic Development Committee, um, and that committee voted to provide a letter. But I think as individuals also, they'll, they'll be active. Um, so yeah, we appreciate any, any form of support that we can get as we go through the process. Because really, if it's better for local residents to be advocating for, for the housing than for us as the greedy developer to be coming right. and advocating yeah. for the housing. Um, it, it just, it's more meaningful. Well, increasing diversity is yes. in our committee's blood. So right. I, I just, think, I think the yeah. thing that people may not connect the dots is that affordable housing and racial diversity are almost inseparable in our mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. Statistically, they're almost mm -hmm. inseparable. And so that may not be obvious no. to everyone. Um, and not so, everyone accepts the facts about the systemic. That's true. Right. That's true. Yeah. So I think I shared, when we were here before, we shared the um, shared a bunch of data about you know the racial composition of Hadley and the county and things. Yeah. And then I think we also shared that in our um, portfolio of rental properties that Valley owns uh, with properties in Northampton and Amherst, I think we're at about 57% uh, BIPOC residents, which is mm -hmm. very different um, than the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 57%? BIPOC mm -hmm. residents. In, in where? In our rental properties no. that we own, Valley owns. Okay. Um, fifty-seven percent current tenants in Northampton and Amherst. So Northampton and Amherst are nowhere near fifty-seven percent right. people of color. But in our affordable housing that we've been owning and operating for a long time, fifty-seven percent of our tenants are people of color. Right. So again, that that nexus of mm -hmm. economics and race. Yeah. It just, we just can't pull it apart mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to make sure that uh, if you can let us know or someone can let us know, this committee know how that process is working out in terms of time. When, yeah. when would it be appropriate for us to make a statement if we want to make a statement? When would it be appropriate? Uh, and how long do you think it's going to take? I mean, but mainly how things are developing so it doesn't get lost. 
Yeah. We love it when people are interested in our work. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'd be bummed if we missed a deadline. Yeah. If we missed an opportunity. To, yeah. My that's great. to get a letter in. Great. My personal experience, and it's only one. I, I went for variants for our addition to our house was that it was not um you know there are th only three members on the cba there's one administrative person that's um supporting them and yeah. so they're kind of you know they have full-time other jobs mm -hmm. and they are gathering and they're kind of i, I think they're kind of listening to you know are there other applications coming so they try mm -hmm. to not hurry up and schedule mm -hmm. and close out because it'll be another three months before the, you know, so they're kind of trying to, like, when I said, I, I checked in with them and what form is what I have to do. So they kind of know that my application is coming, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think, I mean, I, I'm imagining you get your letter from the state and you put your package together, mm -hmm. you'll reach out to them and then they'll know that you're preparing. They already know. I've yeah. already reached out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. They do know. Could um, I also ask that you keep us informed of your progress yes. so that this committee knows through yes. Pat or uh, yes, someone? I will. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, I will. Right. I'm just, you know, it's, it, I can see it coming on the horizon that will initiate the process. How long the ZBA will take will be in their, in their court. And, you know, I get that they're volunteers. I've done yeah. this kind of work in much smaller towns than Hadley, believe it or not, with volunteer boards, and we all muddle through, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to knock them by any stretch. No. I mean, I, I don't, no, it's just I don't personally have the time situation. that they give right. to it, so. Right. And this, yeah. they probably have not done an application like this before, so there's a big learning curve. Mm -hmm. for them. Uh -huh. um, and so it, their job gets easier if they if there's a lot of goodwill in town. Mm -hmm. I mean, the zoning boards and the planning boards take a lot of heat, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so partly it takes a long time because they really don't want to upset people. You know, no mm -hmm. one does. They're volunteers. You know, they don't want people to be mad at them. So if an applicant comes in and they've done their homework and they've talked with that Police chief, the fire chief, the DFW highway. It, it makes their job easier because they know they're not going to step on anyone's toes. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back later and be mad. So the more goodwill a, a, an application comes in with, the easier their job gets. They still mm -hmm. have to do their job, but the emotional part of it is easier. Um, mm -hmm. If there are people saying, yes, we know about this, mm -hmm. we're behind it, we've asked our questions, the questions have been answered, we, we're comfortable. Could you remind me again what, how it's defined affordable yeah. in terms of this yeah. in Hadley? Yeah. So, well, uh, let me just, oh, I'm going to back it up a little bit. So Please. generally in the state, affordable means 80% of the area median income or less. <laughs> um, it's good you said that. <laughs> in our, oh, yeah. the, the proposal that we're making for the Econa Lodge, it's a little more targeted so we're looking at about half of those apartments being at 30% of the area median income, which is called extremely low income. Mm -hmm. And the other half being at 60% of the area median income, which is more like, um, you know, entry level wage earner mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. income. Right now, I don't know what that is, is that, I would say so the person the minimum wage is like 15. Yeah, it's 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 going to 15. I think Alexis put it in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was around 24,000 a year or something like that if you worked full time. Yeah, yeah. that's a big F. And I think our wage. AMI is based, it's not just Hampshire County, I think it includes Springfield. It's the Springfield metro area. <laughs> so it's actually yeah. the, the income limits are lower than. You might think just looking at how they are not going to sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, so we gave, um, actually, then we gave the. Do you, do you have any slides? Do you have any slides? You don't have them on you. Yeah, you have them available. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 30% uh, of the area median income for a one person household is 19800 a year or less. That's the cap, right? 
Sure. Take one person else. Off. Yeah, people may make less than that, but they can't make more than that. Mm -hmm. For two people, it's twenty-two thousand six hundred dollars a year or less. Oh. Now, folks who are in that income tier <clears throat> will be placed into apartments that have rental subsidies in the apartment, which mm -hmm. means they will pay thirty percent of their gross income for their rent. So their rent will be based on their income. For the 60% AMI units, uh, one person can make up to $39,540 a year. Two people can make up to $45,180 a year. And those rents will be fixed to be affordable to people earning somewhat below those levels. So we have this, what's called a window affordability. You don't have to be at the top of that. So a single person working full-time earns $29,640 annually. If they pay, that person, working full time, serving soup. If they pay 30% of their gross income for housing costs, they can't pay more than $741 a month for rent and utilities. And that is where things really fall apart because rent is double that mm -hmm. and yep. utilities mm -hmm. make it triple that at least. So there you go. You're paying all of your income for your housing and your, yeah. and your I asked right, this question right. because I talked mm -hmm. about this topic with a group, one of whom was um, a resident of Amherst, a uh, person of color. Mm -hmm. And her, her thought was that the jobs around <laughs> are lousy. Yeah. And we were talking about yeah, how this is, could, there might be mm -hmm. jobs in the mall. She says, those aren't good jobs. Yeah, mm -hmm. but somebody has to do them. Uh, well, I get that. But this this <laughs> yeah. is a person of color. Yeah. And I, so I'm paying yeah. attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, those aren't good jobs. Yeah. Now, this yeah. is someone who's retired and have his tenure at UMass. So different. It, but yeah. but I don't, yeah. you know, I don't, yeah. I really respect she's she's on top of things. Yeah, I, you know. And it's got me really thinking. Hadley mm -hmm. does have a lot. For, for the population size, it mm -hmm. has a lot of basically entry level wage workers, right. huge yeah. numbers, mm -hmm. like hundreds of people. And you're going, where do they live? Well, and you, well the ones you I asked. That. You wrote, raised well, that. That's yes. just it. That's why I thought yes. uh, the, one of my rationales for the what, the concept of local right. preference was just the people of right. color who I've asked who work in Hadley, where do you live? And they don't live here. Right. That doesn't mean that they would want to live here. Right. At so, one some time, will and some won't. They at one time, I, right. I own a small business. Yeah. At one time, this is a while ago, I interviewed a woman of color who was originally from Florida, but she made it clear, and it didn't turn out to be a good match, but she wouldn't live here because there's not a large enough black community. community. Right. And right. that's one of my concerns right. is right. that, this I don't get me wrong. I think this is a great idea, but it isn't enough. But but it's a you know, and this yeah, is one yeah. of the challenges yeah. in our work. Yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. this is yeah. a very white community for a reason, right? I mean, I mm -hmm. I didn't grow up here, although I'm a direct descendant of one of the first settlers. Not no, I shouldn't mm -hmm. be indigenous people here first, but um, I. I I, I just see, yes. I see a vibe of a lot of, I grew up in Hadley, I live in Hadley, a whole lot, sure. of, and my daughter went to the public school and was rife with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, diversity isn't really something that, you know, it's a good thing, but we value tradition and community and our network, that's the vibe. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that well, I think yeah. education is important, but not everybody wants to be educated. Yeah. This, you know, <laughs> you know all this. <laughs> yeah. and, and this one housing development is not the answer right. to disparities. Right. Mm -hmm. it's Certainly just trying not. to open the door for those people because mm -hmm. there are people you yeah. know, living yeah. in, say, for example, Hamden County. They yeah. would love to live in Hadley. Absolutely love mm -hmm. to. And then there are people who don't know. You know, my yeah. people aren't there. My community, yeah. my church, whatever is in. Mm -hmm. Spectrum, I'm, I'm saying there. Um, so, yeah. but the idea is people should have the opportunity yeah. uh -huh. to be mobile and select where they want to live. And mm -hmm. we have had a hundred years of systemic and legal well, barriers mm -hmm. to mobility. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's right. right. And how does it get marketed? Like, here's this new yeah. place, yeah. sign up for the lottery. How, how does that word get out? Right. So um, we are required to do affirmative fair housing marketing, which means we need to reach into communities of color through okay. 
local publications, radio stations, churches, whatever we whatever methods we can find to reach those communities. You know, we might need to translate things into Spanish. You know, we're trying mm -hmm. to get the word out in those communities. Um, and then depending on some of these other priorities, like if you have a wheelchair accessible unit, you have to list it on the state registry for mm -hmm. people who are looking for an accessible unit statewide. Um, and so that's a great way you can mm -hmm. figure out where those sure. units are. And then if we're trying to target people who don't have housing, We'll be doing outreach to local shelters, soup kitchens, social service sure. agencies, you know. So mm -hmm. so our affirmative fair housing marketing plan is a long document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just talking about the different methods yeah. okay. that we'll use to get the word out. I think I've seen things in the I get the Daily Hipster Gazette, but I seem to remember seeing yeah, a little ad an about ad. something in Holyoke that was like this, that they were building and they were looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like no, that. we'll do an ad in the paper. Yeah. But beyond that, we're in yeah. to do targeted yeah. marketing to reach underserved sure. populations. They don't get that paper. Just trying to get. I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura, I'm still struggling with the whole concept of local preference because it's not a concept that applies to the housing market. Mm -hmm. um, it's a false construct. It, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking of senior housing. We have a lovely senior complex over on E Street um, where Wayne lives. Mm -hmm. And but the developer put those houses, those kind of in the market. Mm -hmm. And the developer couldn't, the town couldn't request local preference. Correct? I don't know. I didn't right. I mean, for private, for private, for that's private, my understanding. For private development or, well, we're, we're private developers. So yeah. the thing that's triggering the ability to request local preference that's is fair. the zoning permit that we're using the 40 days. because you're changing your it's a, it, i see we're, okay. we're zoning under certain provision so the senior right. housing development might have been zoned in a different right. zoning it was i think it was right. a senior zone it was it right. didn't yeah. need to require yeah. a change of zone right. that was right. in a senior zone okay so it, yeah. it mm -hmm. just it just didn't come up because it wasn't in a 40 day um i see that process mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's a construct that you know it's 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 here, yeah. but not but everywhere. The, right? the reason yeah. the reason it exists, honestly, is you know it it forty B is not popular with um, most cities and towns because mm -hmm. it's basically the state saying we're going to tell you you need affordable housing yeah. and we're going to put in place a provision where a developer can ask for these waivers from your well thought out local bylaws and towns don't like that and so the local preference honestly is a sweet yeah that the state put into oh, yeah. um, the other sweetener that went into 40b is um there's a subsidized housing inventory at the state level so each community is supposed to have a goal of 10 percent this is one of the things you brought 10 percent affordable housing stock um, right. and if you have right. more than 10 percent right. you you it's hard for a developer to appeal uh denial um, towns can still grant 40 Bs even if they're over 10%. It's it's the appeal process that's harder for the developer if you have one in front of you. Mm -hmm. One of the motivations on the part of the Happy Planning Board for this project is they can see they're over 10%, but they have some units that are coming off, but the, the affordability might expire, and then how we might be under 10%. And so oh. they're seeing this as an opportunity to kind of bolster yeah. the stock okay. so that they stay mm -hmm. above that 10%. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's lots of places where they don't think communities don't think 10% is enough because there's <laughs> well, the well, needs are much greater. Yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, where I was going with this is when when a, a development is permitted under 40B, all of the units count on the subsidized housing inventory, even if most of them are market rate. So what people don't realize is if your town has 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 percent on subsidized housing inventory, it does not mean there are that many affordable units. <laughs> That's so, another sweetener or something? A sweetener. Yeah. So uh, let's see, in Amherst, they had uh, North Square. Um, it was a pretty recent development. It's 130 units. I think 27 are affordable. All 130 will be on a subsidized housing inventory. Oh. Say that again, please. Yeah, All 127 will be 
All hundred all of the units once it, once a development is permitted under 40B, all of the units are counted as affordable, even mm -hmm. if they're not actually affordable. <laughs> and so I feel like sometimes yeah. towns are like, well, we're doing our job, right? We're at 11%, yeah. we're at 12%. And we're like, well, it may not mean what you think it means. <laughs> because if you really broke down what those units are, they might all be affordable, but they might be yeah. mostly market rate and just permitted in a way that allows them to count. Right, yours, uh, yours would be 100%. Ours would be truly 100%. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both in, in we walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah. But that's because we're a nonprofit, that's what we do. But mm -hmm. private developers mm -hmm. also develop affordable housing, especially in the eastern part of the state, where the, what they're mm -hmm. doing is they're really looking for the density increase they can get under 40B. Right. And, and they're having only 20 or 25 percent of the units be affordable, and because most of them are market rate, because the then they can build a greater density. Profit margin. Uh, more profit. Right. Yeah. We actually want to, we're in it for the affordable housing. <laughs> Not for the profit. The more we talk, the more questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. no, I, 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 I'll throw it out there, though. I, so I did get, thank you, the clarification of affordable. Remind me, is this for single people? Is this mo single moms with kids? I guess is where I'm going. So the this is uh, one bedroom units and studio apartments. So the okay. target market is single individuals, adults. Um, right. However, there are units that are sized that there could be couples. There could be a parent with a child who lives in this community. Yeah. Uh, but the need that we're trying to address that's been okay. most in crisis lately are single mm -hmm. individuals without housing. Okay. Uh -huh. I asked that because I was telling this to another person, Hadley resident, who was about this idea. And they wanted to know, and I said, all these great services that we're going to be providing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to list them off, but I remember. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to know, uh, was there going to be help with child right. care? Right. Was there going to be right. help with family planning? Right. Mm -hmm. So because that's, you know, Pete and I thought, yeah. I seem to remember it yeah, was just no. single people. Yeah, this is, not you know, it doesn't mean there couldn't be yeah. different yeah. configurations, mm -hmm. but this is targeting mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. and couples. Right. Um, we built housing, uh, like we're renovating the old Northampton nursing home in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Um, and those that the focus is more family housing, and so those are actually ranging from studios to okay. three bedrooms. And you know, we're doing a tot lot. We're doing you know, you do yeah. you look at amenities differently. We look at the Cotton Lodge site, which is highway, right. mm -hmm. you know, commercial. Oh, yeah. It's so not a the playground there. It's, 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 it's not even so. I mean, family couldn't live there, but it it yeah, seems yeah. like a great place for individuals who are working in yeah. that strip yeah. who might not have a car, yeah. Yeah. right on the bus. It just yeah. Yeah. and yeah. and it's already tiny. It's already chopped up into yeah. these tiny rooms right. that can be easily converted. We're going to take one hotel room, put a kitchen in, it's a studio. Yeah. We'll take mm -hmm. two and put them together, put a kitchen in, it's a one bedroom. Yeah. Um, That's so great. it just kind of blends itself. I, I asked think. that question because again, this individual, we got into this whole yeah. discussion about the 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 post that that select board had put on, you know, that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the, the idea that maybe bringing up affordable housing and might increase crime. And so the person I was talking to was saying, well, well, just hear me out, was saying, I think if you look at statistics, that's usually younger males uh, who are committing these crimes or, you know, kids where the, the parents aren't, you know, they're, they're not getting no. their needs met. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, I said to him, I think this isn't really going to have young, teenage, you know, 20s. I mean, we keep hearing all these you know, these shootings, and it's a, it seems to be this particular yeah. young male demographic. So again, to, to yeah. think about this from that other topic, is yeah. this going to mean we need to increase our police force? What you're saying, mm -hmm. it does not appear to be that. But mm -hmm. this is, again, an area to educate. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I right. think that this isn't the, the local press reference part. Now, this is the part about do, do, does right. the community right. feel okay about right. more people with lower income? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, there people with already are already here. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and some of them are camping out here in Hadley. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, the the, the connection between uh, to, you know dropping property values and affordable housing has been heavily debunked. I can uh -huh. say that now. Uh -huh. And again, the connection between between crime and affordable housing 
it's just not there. Yeah. Um, however, you know, we think about a lot about management and services on site. Mm -hmm. We think the best defense to protect the community as well as neighbor to neighbor within a building is to have people's needs met. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, exactly. act out when their needs aren't met. And so yeah. to us, it's really not so much about, you know, getting perfect people who are perfect tenants to move sure. in. <laughs> We're actually taking people who maybe had a rough time we're moving in and supporting them so that mm -hmm. gotcha. they will not be acting. Okay. Out. That's the goal. Right. Is that, is that common to offer all those services? It's becoming increasingly it's becoming common. And, and, you know, Valley's done a lot of very small developments over the years where it, it's a matter of scale. One of the things we like about the Econo Lodge, it would be 50 units. It, it is big enough, meaning it will generate revenue such that we can have a full-time resident services coordinator, mm -hmm. a property manager on site, we can have a living, we're going to have a live-in person. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, sometimes big is scary to people, but it also can cut the other way where you can have much better management on site with mm -hmm. a property scale. So we're looking at a, a quite a robust um, staffing plan for, for the property. By the way, that uh, that site is directly across the cornfield from my house. Nice. So you can wander over. <laughs> Absolutely. And so far, it's been sort of random. People in the good weather are outside most of the time. And yeah, uh, outside the outside the Econo Lodge or in the cornfield? Outside the Econo Lodge. Uh, and yeah. they're next to the building. They're cooking out. They're socializing. And one oh, guy's dog yeah. got loose and he came right up to my house chasing me. Oh, well, that's not where we're talking. That's not, I mean, yeah, we're no talking about field. in front of uh, Whole Foods. Yeah, there's no cornfield there. I think you're thinking of the other. Um, uh, the oh, Econ Lodge on and Hadley in Hadley, which is just up the street from the library. This is that's not one you're considering. Um, this, is up at the mall. this is the one that's currently a hotel. Uh, is it across from the stables? Yes. Yeah. Yep. It, and it's right now housing the overflow of UMass students. Is yeah. what I heard. Right. Yeah. So yeah, right it's right in front of the Hampshire Mall. Right before right, you return into home. Whole Foods, or right after you turn into Whole yeah. Foods. It's right on this highway. Right, right there. Right on the busy it's a highway. Three-story building. Yeah, I, I've mm. driven by it, you know, I've yeah. lived in the area all my life. Pretty, and just not, noticed it. Yeah. I've mean, yeah, yeah. always noticed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's a swimming pool oh. here. Inside, but not outside. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, glad inside. I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad too. Yeah, I don't see people outside that building very yeah. often, but right now it is being used for overflow housing for UMass. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's had different uses. Plus. I think the one across from you, um, Wayne, was uh, they're on hold, but they were going to tear it down and rebuild. Is it the Howard Johnson's? Is that the Comfort Inn? Is no, Howard this Johnson's is the Park Inn. Inn or, is it Co Comfort Inn? Uh, yeah. Comfort Inn, I think, is the name of it. It could be Comfort Inn. It, yeah, it's right near the Wildwood uh, Barbecue, right? There's the Knights Inn. You have a lot of them. It might Johnson. be the yeah. Knights Inn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Knights, Knights Inn, Inn could be that. right behind him. It's surprising, like you don't. I, oh, I, don't, I know there's a lot of them. I just don't mm -hmm. memorize the names. They don't blend together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we discriminate. <laughs> no, I, I know lot, better. It has a lot mm -hmm. to do with the colleges too. So I don't want to take too much. Right, right. Um, I can wow. certainly send you some some goodies in terms of studies if you want to have that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You have the um, slideshow from before that you can circulate to your members. Wonderful. And I would love to keep you apprised as we kind of enter the zoning phase. Um, Please. And, yeah. and keep, keep you know, let's just keep chewing on the question of local preference. I, yeah. again, I don't, I don't even think I know and don't to this. You know, it's just something to be thoughtful about. That's all. Mm -hmm. And to yeah. kind of put those connections yeah. mm -hmm. together about, you know, what could be the unintended impact of having a high level preference requirement. Yep. So I think I'm going to go to the malls and interview all of the that workers. <laughs> I don't have time to do that. Know what but you know have? what? It would be interesting. But yeah. you know, would, would you ever consider living in Hadley to just ask yeah. workers, mm -hmm. people who 
yeah. are, are working. Yeah. All there's so many people that work in health. And I'm sure you get mm-hmm. a diversity of responses mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Some people are like, you know what? Yeah. Right. My kids are going right. in right. where I live. My kids go to school there. I have family, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. some folks, I've, I've had a person call me who lives in Amherst now who really wants to move to the college site. And I'm, like, I'm kind of like, you know, do you work at the malls? And he's like, no, I just really like the location. <laughs> walking boy for sure you can get anywhere you can get grocery you can get over yeah. to the bike path and have a nice yeah. recreational event yeah. 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 all right interesting mm. well i appreciate your interest sure. well, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. are there any FAQ, faqs that we've missed or I think oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I could think of more stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. I may hang around, but I kind of don't want to. Okay. I know you have other agenda yeah. items. Well, thank you. You want to get out of town before the snow hits? Oh, no. That's right. No more snow. <laughs> Global climate yeah. change. No, We're not yes, getting not. snow. No. Yeah. Um. Any more questions for Laura or shall we wrap up that? I would appreciate seeing the handouts uh, that you mentioned. I'd like to have those. And I don't think I saw the ones from last meeting. So Um, there was a slideshow that that Alex sent us a a, a PowerPoint. I missed that somehow. Yeah. Okay. I think it's somewhere. I I haven't opened it either, but yeah. It's there. I think I saw it on my phone. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to download that. No, that, that file. Excellent. No, it's excellent. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, um, thank yeah. you for your work. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you for your yeah, interest. Great. Yeah. Let's find that's some more spaces thing. for you to develop. Right. I know yeah. that's the bigger. That, oh, yeah, that's the exactly. bigger point. Exactly. exactly. No, that's the yeah. time. <laughs> and that's kind of you know I think it's it's not a black and white um, no. Unintended. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's complex. I mean, yeah. like yeah. you said, um, not everyone that's of lower income wants to come. You know, some people might say, mm-hmm. "I want to stay where I have a stronger community." Mm-hmm. Someone else mm-hmm. might be more willing to m- make that be that cutting edge, be that you know, come here and say, "You know, I'd rather commute by bike." five days a week and take my car one day back to my church, you know, mm-hmm. instead of, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. five days driving up yeah. 91. You know, it's, okay. it's, it's gonna, yeah. it's very yeah. personal. Yeah. Is there a place for people who might have a car to park? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's a big hotel. The whole parking lot. And there's a mall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then some people, this isn't the development, but you know the schools have a very good re- reputation as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. 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 So yeah. that yeah. is yeah. a motivator for yeah. people who are strong yeah. enough that they might leave their home community just yeah. to get that educational right. advantage. Right. Right. But I think right. this is mostly for single. This is yeah, yeah. just a right. 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 broader yeah. segment. Right. Yeah, because right. yeah. I think that right. really when I think about it, it needs to be more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the narrative right. needs to be. Housing access is a human rights issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The people yeah. should have the right to mobility. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. again, it's been systemically yes. yep. certain groups. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Sorry, I said we were talking. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> Important. So if uh, we're ready to close that section of our meeting, we can move on, move back to item two, the clerk's report. As we're trying to say one more time, thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. I read through these minutes and they look great to me. So I, Mm -hmm. I, I move to accept. Is that, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Do we have a second? Yep. All right. All in favor? Sounds good. All right. How about Wayne? Okay. Wayne, good. It's unanimous. <laughs> um, anything that you wanted to add, um, Pat, or we'll go on to new business? Um, 
Uh, Mark, I, given the time, yeah. it's 8 12. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I would like to make a motion that we um, that we move the new business item to the January agenda. Sure. Well, this was part of our new, uh, I think Wayne even came up with it that we try to uh, have a primary topic or visitor yeah. or something mm -hmm. at, at each yeah. meeting. So um, that's fine. Uh, open agenda, anything um, we knew about the, um, I missed that, right? That, that was last, two nights ago was the diversity mm -hmm. thing at the oh, yeah, Hopkins. Hopkins yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. Right. I only knew about it Reading it in the paper Tuesday morning. I right, I had right. known ahead of time. I might have gone to go. Right. Yeah. I feel like it had crossed my bow at some point. I don't remember how or where. I hadn't really registered it. And then I got the email from Mara Breen. It was like, this is tonight. You should go. And I was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I can do that. Mm -hmm. It just reminded and me that we, it would be good to know what that club is, you know, to let them know we're here and that we'd love to know what they're up to. Oh, what? To the town. Yeah. Um, we did reach out to the uh, town hall about our uh, annual report. And I believe, did Jennifer say it was uh, probably due in January? I think March. Maybe, yeah, it's later. And one page, and uh, she couldn't promise that any photos would get in. And But anyway, she gave us the information that we need so we won't uh, miss that this year. And I think if we draft it up in our January meeting, bless it in our February, then we can move that forward. Um, Could you be a little clearer on that? I, it, it sounds like maybe someone or a committee would draft it up and bring it to the rest of us. I can't see us writing it in a meeting. Right. Right? right? Yeah. yeah, true. And okay. I off, I'll offer to write up. I'll go through the meetings and I'll do a draft report. Oh, bring it to oh great. Great, because I was going to nominate like Wayne. Wine, chocolate, <laughs> coffee. All of the above. D just your email address in case okay. I yeah. have any questions. Okay. I'll just go through our minutes. and that, Okay. It'll great. be brief. It, it's really only a few paragraphs as yeah. I sure. read the, the okay. reports from the other committees. And I want to add <laughs> one other <clears throat> brief note. Uh, if anyone is interested in Zooming, um, it's uh, let's see. This was this. So the twenty first is the Wednesday or the twentieth. The twenty first, I think, is the select board meeting that uh, they will be um, reading Megan's request to be appointed to our committee. So if any of us, all of us, can attend and support that, express mm -hmm. our support, um, that would be great. Thanks. What date is that? Mark? The twenty first. The twenty first of um, December. December. It's a yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. I think that they start at six, but I don't. Six. Yeah, but I don't okay. know what their agenda. Okay. Yeah, you know, that will we can maybe Pat and I can check that that week when their mm -hmm. agenda comes out, and we can see where. Not that they don't change things, but I don't think they change it as much mm -hmm. as they used to. Wayne mm -hmm. has a question. Yes, Wayne. I just want to share that I'm very disappointed in uh, the select board member who indicated she was not going to respond to our questions about her rabid uh, public statements. Uh, and I don't know if there's any place we can go with that or if it's something we just have to let go because she's there. But um, I find that reprehensible. Disappointing. And irresponsible as a public uh, official in Hadley. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to follow up on my own in the next couple of months, but um, I just want to register that I think that's terrible. That she just said, nah, not going to say anything. Um, so she's not being held to account for that awful thing that she said. 
Um, agreed, agreed. And unfortunately, I don't think any of us really has the bandwidth to push that further, although it does kind of sting. Yeah, I would I would say it stinks. <laughs> you yeah, you put a G on, I would put a K on. But yeah, so I just want to register that. I don't know where I can go with that, but um, maybe talk to the town administrator who talked to her and was okay with letting her get off the hook. But I just want that to be noted. Could find someone to run against her when her term ends. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. I I feel I feel what you're saying, mm -hmm. and I feel that this code of ethics is their response. And if you know, reading this, if that happens again, then the, whoever does that is going. There's you know there's I mean you yeah. said we aren't going to talk about this, but there's a section on enforcement, right? And so. You know, it's one of those things, and a fair amount of time has passed, and it's always, I just, when, when something hasn't dealt with quickly, it's, mm -hmm. but yeah. it, it'll happen again. It will happen again. And and yeah. I think this will be a helpful tool, but uh, I, I'm disappointed too, but I accept it. Yeah, I think it's, it's complex, and I wasn't sure how to approach it, because yeah. that individual has, uh, it's not even arguably has clearly given a lot to this town. Mm, yep. Whereas we are a committee that is left of center. She's clearly <laughs> right of center. <laughs> are we wrong and she's right, or are we right and she's wrong? How do we you know unfortunately I just didn't have the bandwidth to yeah how to I understand I understand it's a mess. We're appointed by that board, so yeah, right, yeah. but it doesn't make it swallow any easier. So I'm also been newbie here, but I wonder about um, right in the future if issues like this were to come up, right? There's the code of conduct, there's those things clearly stated, but also just in terms of leveraging relationships and people knowing each other and sitting down and saying, well, what are your concerns, right? And how can we talk about that? How could we be open to that? How could we access information, resources, and actual data about whatever yep. your concerns might be? Um, I don't know this person, and you know, so I guess I'm wondering about this sort of um, relational kind of mm -hmm. possibilities mm -hmm. there. In terms of bridge with building, you. yeah, yeah, because I think that statement, while the way it was presented and sit well, I, I do think she was making a statement of concern, yeah, about the yeah. safety in the community, yeah, mm -hmm. and out whether it's out of ignorance or not. Right. I was just wishing that, that she could not elaborate. I just, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think they'll have their chances. Yeah. Yeah. Going forward, this mm -hmm. I think we're going to have some chances, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully, with the code of conduct. <laughs> people will think more before they just make a knee-jerk opinionated comment without mm -hmm. factual mm -hmm. um because social media is not going away mm -hmm. yep yeah my guess is she got the message but yeah. <laughs> that was mine. And the, the message to her is probably don't share your real opinions you know social i don't media. know but but anyway i'm I'm glad we called up on it and I wish it could go further, but that it is. All right. With that, I will close the open agenda. Next meeting, Pat, remind me, it's January. Is it the third Thursday? It is the third Thursday. And for some reason, I think it might be the 17th, but let me look. It's the 19th at 7 p.m. January 19th at 7 p.m. And are you I will, meeting? for the record, I will not be able to be at that meeting. Um, okay. In person or by Zoom? Yeah, I'm having surgery on the 9th, which is going to be pretty extensive, and I'm likely to be just yes. getting out of the hospital then. And mm. uh, yeah, so okay. I don't know how it's going to work, but we send you our best wishes. Let us know if you need a casserole brigade or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
did you have a question? And I, do, do you still want me to present some of my work in your field or? Yes. Sure. It's going to be on the January. Okay. Yeah. That would I love be that. great. Is that okay. good? Yeah. Yes, that would be great. I think that networking and great. And yes, that would be great. And actually for the February meeting, I'll do the report. Okay. So that'll give okay. me some time. Okay. Great. All right. So we have our agendas for. I just have one, January. And just one quick question. Did, did you see my email asking if there's a copy of the town's anti harassment, anti discrimination mm -hmm. policy? That was on me to ask them. So that is my action. Okay, because I thought I need to mm -hmm. ask them. <laughs> I, I'm, I have okay. to ask them for a, a, okay. a copy. Okay, great. Then you can show you. us because it's it connected. might be an opportunity also, Mark, for those of us who haven't gone through the training because, and, and Megan will need to, there's required training. Oh, oh yeah, I haven't done that either. And I think I read those. I forgot. I now, think I read those. Anti-harassment. And this, yeah. So I think you think think you, it's online no. training okay. as a committee member. You need yeah. to go through. Great. But yeah. they will tell you. Yeah, and I believe that I may have seen those policies when I went through the training. So, but but I I actually would would suggest that it would be helpful to have those on the town website. I, I looked mm -hmm. all over. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> seems like that'd be a good place yeah. for them. <laughs> kind so of. Mark is taking notes, so yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah. So you can ask them to so put it on fire on the website, and even the code of conduct. I oh, looked well. to see if that was there, and it isn't. Mm -hmm. At least that's passed already. Um, well, it, it passed the select board, so I believe it. Oh, yeah. So I don't know, but they got a typo in there. That's why I asked. But. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. If anyone would want to make that motion, a motion. Um, I move. Okay. And is there a second? Sure, I'll second. All right. All in favor of adjourning our December meeting. 